So today I want to talk about the most epic debate I have ever seen. The debate that had the greatest impact on me it was between, we had on one side, Stephen Fryer, Jordan Peterson. In, in agreeing to uh, participate in this debate and stand on this side of the argument, I'm fully aware that many people who choose incorrectly, in my view, to, to see this issue in terms of left and right, devalued and exploded terms, as I think they are, will believe that I am betraying myself. Opposing two other people on the other side of the issue, and the issue is political correctness. I've been given huge grief already simply because I'm standing here next to Professor Peterson, which is the very reason that I am standing here in the first place. And he's someone who I th <laughs> would identify as a liberal and someone on the left, but he is trying to illustrate why he thinks the left has gone too far. So you have the charming Englishman, and then you have Jordan Peterson doing Jordan Peterson. A grand canyon has opened up in our world. The fissure, the crack, grows wider every day. Neither on each side can hear a word that the other shrieks, and nor do they want to. The people of the world try to get on with their lives alternately baffled, bored, and betrayed by the horrible noises and explosions that echo all around. I think it's time for this toxic, binary, zero-sum madness to stop before we destroy ourselves. What he's able to do with the audience is personalize it. Uh, progress is not achieved by preachers and guardians of morality, but to paraphrase Yevgeny Zemyatin, by madmen, hermits, heretics, dreamers, rebels, and skeptics. The essence of his argument is that I'm opposed to political correctness because I do not think it works. Not because I'm opposed to trying to create a better world and I, I understand and I agree with many of the motivations here, this golden hill which we're trying to reach. I want a better world as well. My concern is that I don't think that your approach works. I want to achieve, I want to get to the golden hill, but I don't think that's the way to get there. Um, I believe one of the greatest human failings is to prefer to be right than to be effective. What he's able to do with the audience is personalize it. He shows us, makes it very clear at the very beginning why he's there, what he's hoping to achieve, why this is important to him. I really do think I may be wrong, but uh, I'm prepared to entertain the possibility that political correctness will bring us more tolerance uh, and, and a better world. Um, but I'm not sure, and I would like this quotation from my hero Bertrand Russell to hover over the evening. One of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid, and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. Let doubt prevail. Building a position around common decency, common sense, and he's not opposed to progress, but beating people over the head with this, it backfires. And what was really interesting about this debate is that we had, everyone was polled at the beginning of it, and they all have a device to electronic device so you can poll the entire audience. What's your position on political correctness? Do you think it's good, a force for good or bad in today's climate? They take the poll, they have the debate, and at the end they poll them again and they see if there's been a change, if there's been a shift. And the results were remarkable. Mm -hmm. I'm saying fuck political correctness. Resist! Fight! If you have a point of view, fight it in the proper manner, using democracy as it should be, not channels of education, not language, you know? It's so silly. But it, 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 there's a chess rule, you know? In chess, the best move to play in chess is not the best chess move, it's the move your opponent least wants you to play. You At the moment, the... you're being recruiting sergeants for the right. But by Wait annoying minute. and upsetting, and instead of fighting, either fighting or persuading, the two people opposing Stephen and Fryer and Jordan Peterson, they just fell apart. When the idea that there is this, I understand again, that there is like a problem of kind of left wing annoyance. And if you want to have a debate about whether social media is terrible for democracy, I will be on the gay side. Um, but right now, I, well, where I really disagree, well, a couple of, there's a couple of places I really disagree. Pick but, one and then I'm going to go to Michael. But I, Bless your heart, I don't know what she was doing. I, 
she's just saying progress is good. She's trying to make a case for identity politics that and she's doing this with her hands. Progress. The people who actually, people have only, by and as far as I can think, in media, the people who have lost their jobs and lost their careers, it's been for extremely serious misbehavior documented by multiple women who had corroborating witnesses. And he does acknowledge fear and how he is scared that this is being wielded as a weapon. The other day in a debate I was having, the person I was debating tried to make the case that, look, being transphobic is not a death sentence. Yes, I might categorize J.K. Rowling as a transphobe, but that's not, it's just a way of me categorizing my thinking. Calling someone transphobic is not a death sentence. Uh, I think we, we tend to evaluate like, for instance, you have opinions about groups of people and whether what they're doing is wrong or right. Um, that's not a death sentence either. Like, you think people shouldn't be emotional during arguments. You think that people should use logic and reason. Warren, in the same way that you disagree with people on unions and economics, and you have, you must have some kind of categorization in your mind. For you to uh, have a way of talking about them, to say, like, these are those people. These are, this is a group of people who represent this idea. But to be uh, fair, calling you're, them you're, it's not is like a disparaging way of describing them. To be fair, it's not just a way of describing someone. You are calling them a bigot. And people are being accused of being a bigot and their lives are being ruined over this. They are being mobbed. They are being attacked. This is being wielded as a form of control and an expression of power. This is not just a categorization or a way to describe someone. So it's, uh, that's the same thing that I'm doing. No, it's not. This is not harmless. Oh, unjustly criticized and you feel silenced, which again, I think is really different than being silenced. You call it um, political correctness. And I would like the culture also to be more, you know, freewheeling. I think one solution, you know, you're not going to kind of get the left to, um, I don't know, they can't kind of put an end to this because it is much more of a mob social media phenomenon than it is kind of some diktat coming up from on high. And so one, really the only way to break through it is to say what you are, what you say that you're afraid to say, right? I mean, that's the only way to sort of um, pop this bubble or kind of end this, uh, end this anxiety or at least diffuse it a little bit. Whereas, again, what I hear Mr. Peterson talking about as political correctness is something much more broad and much more um, kind of fund much much more fundamental to social change. And you're talking about you know you want me to define or one of us to talk about when the left goes too far. And if I'm you know I certainly don't want to be a woman putting words in your mouth. But if mm. um, if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is that you want me to kind of renounce Marxist categories or to... It's up to you. Well, I just want you to do it. I want you to define when the left goes too far. You can do it any way you want. And then Jordan Peterson adds beautifully to that. He tries to ask the two on the other side, how can you identify when the left has gone too far? And they never, they never acknowledge that. They never actually answer that question. I'm sort of disappointed that the subject has just revolved around academia, which was predictable, because that's the sort of crucible in which these elements are mixed. And Stephen Fryer pointed out multiple times that they were evading any discussion on political correctness. But even more disappointed that really I haven't heard from Michelle or, or, or from Professor Dyson as to what they think political correctness is. Because what they've talked about is basically saying progress, in, the, in our view, is progress. Well, I agree. That's, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it is too. And good on progress. But... Um, <laughs> How is it that you're saying political, that what we call political correctness, you call progress? That's what you're supposed to be arguing. I want to know what you mean by political correctness. They were evading any discussion on political correctness. They were talking about why progress is good, why progress is important. Well, progress is good. Yes, we like progress. Like, good things happening is good. But that's, <laughs> but that's not an argument for why political correctness is necessary in order to achieve those good things. I'm still very lost about why we aren't talking about political correctness. We're talking about yes. politics, and uh, I think people so. will look back Let's on this debate and, and wonder why political correctness wasn't discussed. Um. Yeah. Michael Eric Dyson being this 
kind of huckster <laughs> snake oil salesman who's just using at one point he <laughs> goes on he goes on this little rant where he just throws in these overly complicated words just so unnecess- unnecessary stringing them together in this preachery rhythmic way that mad white comment was not predicated upon my historical excavation of your past it's based upon the evident vitriol with which you speak and the denial of a sense of equanimity among combatants in an argument so I'm saying again you're a mean mad white man and the viciousness is evident okay 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 perhaps the most epic moment I've ever seen for me this is the most epic moment for for him when Michael Eric Dyson <laughs> calls him a mean, mad white man. This is what I'm saying to you. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. And you're going to get us right. And I have never seen so much wine and snowflaking. And it, let's just say it backfires. You Let's shall. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Let's get precise about this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get precise. To what degree is my preve- present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean 5%? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege you so that I can stop right hearing now. about it? So let's figure out how I can dispense with my white privilege and so that you can tell me when the left has gone too far, since they clearly can. And that's what this debate is about, about political correctness. It's about the left going too far. And I think it's gone too far in many ways. And I'd like to figure out exactly how and when so the reasonable left could make its ascendance again and we could quit all this nonsense. When you see a performance like this, you see the opposition with their their salesman talk, their pulpit talk, their oddly chosen wording that tries to sound so smart and weave and dance and it paint this illusion of intelligence and substance when there's really nothing there. It's 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 even worse than a politician. and it, it appears like just bullets bouncing off a tank because one side is grounded in truth. And one side is doing everything it can to dance around that truth and to sell an alternative story to reality. But that story will never be able to compete to reality. But I don't think we should underestimate how much this feeling is prevalent in the culture of <laughs> this strange paradox that the liberals are illiberal in their demand for liberality. They are exclusive in their demand for inclusivity. They are homogenous in their demand for heterogeneity. They are somehow undiverse in their call for diversity. You can be diverse, but not diverse in your opinions and in your language and in your behavior. Uh, It's it's a a time, I think, for really engaging, emotionally fulfilling, passionate and positive doubt. That's what I would urge. Thank you.